So here it is. This is my bike, my steed that I'll be riding on probably a good 30, 35 miles tomorrow. And it is my Brompton, as you can see there. Now you may or may not know these bikes. I, up to just over a year ago, certainly 15 months ago, I'd never even heard of these, um, not at all. And uh, obviously I'd heard of folding bikes, but not this particular brand. And I then decided just over a year ago, it might be an idea to get a folding bike for some things I had planned. So I started doing a bit of research and if you start researching folding bikes, it's not long before you come across these things. And it turns out that these uh, have been made in pretty much the same form for uh, you know, nearly 50 years. They've got a, uh, a very long lived pedigree and the fact that they've kind of almost unchanged in all of that time speaks volumes. But it also turns out they've got a, this kind of really great worldwide cult following. Um, you know, people who own them just seem to love them. It's a little bit like same kind of scenario as I suppose VW camper vans, old Land Rovers, Rolex watches. Uh, yeah, that kind of cult following. Um, mind you, kind of the top range uh, Bromptons are probably nearly as much as a uh, bottom end or bottom of the range Rolex. To be honest with you, they they ain't cheap. Although this one is a relatively basic one um, it's a six speed model and although it's pretty much new condition uh, and hadn't done many miles when i first got it i managed to get it for a second hand for a really good price so uh, i was really happy with that uh, the guy i bought it from uh, had it from new and he said he'd only ever done about 20 miles on it in the whole time um, I've probably done about 200 miles on it, getting on for now, so I'm certainly giving it a bit of use. I've got it back in uh, late September, I think it was, last year, and I used it quite a few times during the winter, and I've been using the other bike, the big bike. This isn't the one I crashed in central Manchester in on, by the way, that was the other bike, um, but... Uh, uh, I have been using it throughout the winter and the reason why I like it is because it folds up to such a small size. I'll show you it folded up in a second, I'll transpose it uh, on, on here, you know. Um, but when it's folded up, it's basically the size of a small to medium suitcase. Uh, now I know you can take, which is brilliant if you're going on trains and stuff, because okay you can take normal bikes on trains but it can be a bit awkward you've got to get into the right bit of the train yeah the bike bit and then if there's a couple of guys with bikes there already then it's like well what do you do you know you have to get yourself in there somehow and if the, cra the train's crowded it can be a bit fraught whereas this thing you just sort of fold it up and uh, no one can say anything because if people are there with like a medium sized suitcase it's sort of the same difference and you can lift this up and put it on the rack you know on the, on the train the sort of luggage rack thing um, or if there's no room for that you and there's no sit uh, nowhere to sit you can just literally stand there with this thing between your legs straddling it and it doesn't really take up much more of a foot footprint than uh, it does if you're just standing there with you know nothing so it's convenient for that you don't have to worry about it getting nicked because you just fold it up and take it into the shop with you or um, kind of a pub or a cafe with you and just have it sort of sit in there they, they pack up so small that you know there's no danger of people tripping over it basically anywhere anywhere where you see people with a suitcase you sometimes see people with suitcases uh, in the pub or whatever if they've just come back or just about to go on holiday um, any any way where you can do that you can do with one of these things so it, it really is sort of a great little bike and I, I can see why people fall in love with them uh, you know I'm six foot four 
and these can take anything up to six foot five so um, it's not like it's too small for me either it when you're on it it really does you know sort of fly um, it's a fast bike you know you uh, it's got quite tall gearing at, up at the top end this is as I say the six speed model and the top T gears five and six they they are quite tall so it's a fast bike and you can really fly on it and although it's a small bike and I'm six foot four um, I've got you know the seat goes up quite high on this one and this is the high handlebar version you get like low medium and high versions and uh, so I've got the high version here and it feels like a normal bike when you're sort of cycling along uh, okay I'll probably look like a circus act a uh, six foot four bloke on this thing <laughs> uh, probably looks a bit daft but hey I don't care about that and yeah I love this thing I love, I, you know, I love how it rides I love how versatile it is I love how small it folds up and also where I'm staying tonight is it's only a small place very small room but when I've got this folded up it will just go in a corner and not be any bother at all whereas if I had my full size bike well, I wouldn't even be able to get it into the room, I don't think, and I'd just be tripping up over it all the time while I was there, even if I did so. So, yeah, it's really good. Um, obviously, they're not the best off-road, but I've been down kind of some off-road tracks, as, as long as they're not too bumpy. You get quite a lot, a lot of them, uh, which is sort of, you know, reasonably well made up, and this can handle that. Um, I'll be doing five miles to the station and uh, where I'm departing from and most of that is off-road uh, like a disused railway line and made up with this kind of shale type stuff on the uh, the surface so it handles that no bother and when I get down to the coast most of it's tarmac down there anyway so uh, no problem there so yeah, going to get on the train at Crawley and going to get myself down to uh, probably Chichester on the south coast there. Then I'm going to come back all the way back to Brighton eventually and then on the train home from there. But I'll be stopping along the way for a night out. Uh, you know, it's nice to have a night out as long as it's cheap. And yeah, I think in all it's probably going to be about 50 miles that I'll be doing not not far short of that anyway and yeah looking forward to it better get going i'm on my way to the station now uh probably another three miles to go so just under halfway here just thought i'd just stop and show this track so it's like uh as you can see from the straightness an unused disused railway line and yeah got the brompton there there we go just waiting for me and yeah it can handle tracks like this no bother I and mean, it's pretty smooth but it's a bit rough about there and it just about handles that uh, not too much problem but i wouldn't want to go on anything too much rougher but yeah you can see on the brompton i've got the uh, special bag for it i might show that in a bit more close-up detail later on but so far so good but better get on down to the station and i'll uh, catch up with you there service to so here i am at chichester station with the bike behind me ready to go so nice journey down and the trip from crawley to Chichester is a very spectacular one. 
goes through some lovely countryside and the best bit is when you go past Arundel Castle, quite spectacular. But here I am now in Chichester, so got down there quite quick really. So just going to go around the corner to a bike shop first of all, that's my first stop, and then on with the ride proper. Right, I made it to the outskirts of Bognor now from Chichester. So it wasn't very far, five miles, took about 20 odd minutes, 25 minutes, whatever it's been. Uh, I did stop at that bike shop and got what I wanted, so I'll show you those later, but it makes cycling a lot more comfortable. So just outside Bognor FC here, football club, and I'm sure that's making the likes of, you know, if you support Liverpool, Manchester United, Arsenal, uh, Chelsea, etc. I'm sure you're trembling in your boots, aren't you, right now at the site of Bognor Regis FC. But uh, yeah, going to carry on to Littlehampton, that's the next waypoint now, so going to get on down to there. Right, that's what I stopped in Chichester for at the bike shop. These things that go on the end of the uh, handlebars, uh, grips and the kind of bar end things, uh, they just make a long ride a lot more comfortable than the standard things you get on Bromptons. And yeah, I must say so far, I've done about 10 miles with them and it's really good. So just taking a rest here at this lovely old church. Uh, somewhere between Bognor and Littlehampton and yeah just going to be carrying on my way to Littlehampton in a minute. made it as far as uh, East Preston here, had a quick lunch in the Seahorse Cafe there, the blue one behind me, and this is East Preston behind me there. And the sea's just a couple hundred yards, or a few hundred yards back that way, uh, behind me. So, uh, probably about three quarters of the way now, uh, or two thirds. So uh, I'm going to go to Ferry next, then along to Worthing, and then along to Shoreham, and then I basically turn left and do a climb up the flank of the South Downs to where I'm going tonight. So I'm going to get onto the coastal path. It's a very nice ride, and I'll hopefully get some footage along there.
I seem to have arrived in Canada. Oh, how did that happen? Coming up to Worthing Pier now, in the distance. Don't know if you can quite see it yet on the wide angle. This is a very pleasant little ride along Worthing Seafront. complete with palm trees. I bet you didn't know we had palm trees here in England. Mind you, that's about as tall as they get, not even the height of a lamppost normally. Far cry from the uh, lovely massive things you get in uh, the Far East and Caribbean and that. Which, to be honest with you, I'm sure these guys, these palm trees would much rather be over there. Be a bit warmer for them. The English climate stunts their growth a bit. Some of the architecture you get along the seafront in these seaside towns is incredible really. for the traffic you'd think you're in a bygone age here I think that was a public convenience we just cycled by there and it smelt like it I can tell you <laughs> Be glad it's not smell vision So here we come. Here we come to uh, Worthing Pier. The architecture there is a bit more modern. I say modern. That's a good 60, 50, 60 years old, I should think. I'd say Worthing is, despite that little bit of tat there we uh, cycled by, I would describe Worthing as one of your more genteel English seaside resorts. Here we go, Worthing Pier. This is pretty much central Worthing now. Complete with the usual cocktails, cold beer, sort of cafes, pubs, and all of that sort of thing. Just coming out to the eastern side of Worthing town centre along the seafront cycleway. And next stop is Shoreham, which is basically I do a left, head north towards my night's accommodation. But before we do that, we'll just enjoy a little bit more of this uh, seafront action.
have a light aircraft taking off from Shoreham Airport. So we're getting near now, getting near. So there we go, just made it to Truly Hill. So Chichester to here, which I think must be a good 30 plus miles. Most of it pretty plain sailing along the coastal flats, really. And I had a southwesterly, westerly, southwesterly wind behind me as well. So it's pretty easy going until about the last three or four miles there because this place is called Truly Hill, where I'm staying tonight. New Foster Hill in the South Downs, and they weren't joking when they called it Hill. So Hill is the operative word. But <laughs> oh, I made it up, I made it with a couple of stops, but without getting off and walking. So job a good one. So here I am. Don't know what time it is, but I've got a little room here. I'm going to check in there, have a drink and chill out for a while. This is my little room at the youth hostel. It is a private room, so it's just me in here tonight. It's not like a, a dorm where I've got to share with other people. If you do that, it's only about, well, very cheap, 10, 15, maybe 20 pounds a night. Uh, but for 30 pounds a night, you can uh, have, when they're available, uh, a room to yourself and when you consider that's what you pay for camping in a lot of places I don't think it's too bad at all and this will certainly do me and you can see what I mean about the Brompton it's a tiny little room uh, you've got about a meter meter and a bit there and then the beds and tiny little wardrobe uh, kind of thing storage thing and yeah, that's the entire bike packing kit there. Brompton bike at the bottom and the bag, helmet and everything else at the top there with my overnight kit in it. So let's just uh, have a little look around, see what you get for your 30 pounds. So you get this little storage thing and a mirror and then your beds, bottom bunk for me tonight. Then you get a little sink, uh, bin, and a mirror to see your sweaty biking self in. So, uh, got to go and have a shower in a minute. And that is it, really. Basic, but it does the job, really. So, on oh, a little stool thing there. So, yeah, that's what you get. Not too bad, really. Somewhere to put your head down for the night, anyway. And you also get full run of the facilities, there's showers out there, not on suite, but you know, they're only next door, so not too bad. And you can go and use the lounge all the evening if you want. There's self catering facilities there, so you can bring your own food, cook it up, you've got everything you need, pots, pans, utensils, plates, cutlery and all everything. So you can bring your own food and cook it, 
here you're allowed to do that but I'm just going to go for uh, some of their stuff you can see the menus here uh, I'll be perusing those last time I came here I had a nice pizza which not only did me for the dinner but I had about a third of it left over which was my breakfast as well so uh, uh, I didn't do too badly there probably do the same kind of thing again tonight I'd have thought so it's Wednesday morning so had a very nice restful night in there in the youth hostel here at Trudy Hill beds are very comfortable and I slept like a log I went right the way through from about 11 o'clock till 7 o'clock so a good eight hours sleep there and yeah just going to uh, get on the Brompton in a minute and head back so I had my pizza and had about two thirds of it last night with a drink and the rest of it this morning for breakfast. So two meals for the price of one there. So that was really good. So what I thought I'd do is get on the road, although it's a short day today, cycling wise, just have to drop down, back down to Shoreham, down that great big hill. So it's all downhill this morning, which is good news and along the coast to Brighton, then up to the station and away. I'll probably stop for a coffee somewhere along as I get into Brighton. But yeah, gonna basically just head home. But before I do that, I thought I'd just show you a little bit of the bike packing setup that I've got here. Yeah, so that's the bag. One of the uh, Brompton bags, very expensive these things are normally but I managed to get this one free with another Brompton I got, one that Lorraine uses. So uh, I got the buy that bike very cheap as well. So effectively this bag was free or pretty much free, but what it does, I'll just grab it. You get these mounting blocks, luggage mounting blocks here on every Brompton. I think they're standard and all that you do is you just drop it on until it clicks into place. I always like to give it a tug up to uh, make sure it's on. And yeah, that's everything you need. I've got enough kit in there for a night out. You could probably get two or three nights out uh, worth of kit in there, to be honest with you, because it sort of extends up quite a lot, that bag, but uh, only one night there and that is the setup on top of the South Downs here with some cows for company Getting towards the uh, bottom of the downs, that's the A27. You can see the sea in the distance there. And that big old building there, I think, is Lansing College. Big posh public school, kind of over the top of that bush in the foreground there in the distance. looking more or less west there. So that's what we were waiting for. Great big lot for a little boat. <laughs> So you've got to wait here because the lock gate there forms the bridge across. Here it comes back, so we won't be long now. And then once we're over the other side, there's a nice, you know, good two or three mile cycle right off the main road and everything, which is lovely. Oh, and here we go across the bridge. Oh, 
And there's another lock gate here. And another bridge. Here we are, fully across to the crappy timber yard here. So all that timber must come in on the ships, get off-roaded, store here. Right, now we've just got this nice quiet road. Very quiet, apart from the odd wagon that goes past here. <laughs> A bit nicer than the busy a259 that I was on coming from Shoreham down to Port Slade here. That's what this is, Port Slade. Private property, no public access. That's all right, I'm just outside the gate. So yeah, came away from the youth hostel there, dropped down the hill, lovely long downhill descent there. What took me about half an hour to go up yesterday took about 10 minutes to come back down. <laughs> so that was great. And then across those locks there, well, I came out of Shoreham by sea and along the A259 for a mile or two until you get to uh, the crossing there, across the locks. So that's quite interesting. The locks were closed as far as we we're concerned to let that boat through. Quite interesting to watch. And now I'm on my way again, so not far to Brighton, just got this kind of quiet road here. And then the Brighton seafront cycle path for a few miles, so not much on road cycling to be done now. So this is quite interesting, got the uh, sea there. I think there's someone having a swim in there. Braver soul than I am. And then on the, then you got the, coastal path here and on the other side we haven't got nice beachside cafes restaurants and all of that we've got nice beachside industrial but I find that kind of thing fascinating to be honest it's great to see the industrial infrastructure of the country Okay, we're just coming into Brighton now. So the old wreck of the West Pier, I think it was called. Still standing there. It's almost become a, like a feature of Brighton and Hove anyway. stunning seaside architecture here in Hove than there was in uh, Worthing and that was spectacular enough so that great big tall thing is the uh, 360i you can go right the way up to the top of that pole on the donut thing you can see just coming down there maybe and you get some quite spectacular views up there. I've done it just uh, a couple of months before the uh, nonsense started. into Brighton now you can tell you're in Brighton because they're uh, kind of corporate colours that they paint everything as far as to do with the council is this uh, sort of turquoisey blue colour 
So that's a bit of rust <laughs> at the moment. It's a bit annoying when you, uh, this is clearly de designated a cycle lane and there's a great big wide footpath there and yet you still get people insisting uh, on uh, walking on the cycle bit. Oh well. Here's the big posh hotels. The Metropole there, the red one. And the cream one, the Grand, Brighton Grand Hotel. The one where uh, it was bombed in 1984 where they nearly got Thatcher. Brighton Pier marks the furthest point east that I'll be going. So, just gone past the road that takes me up the hill to the station. So, gonna be going up there in a second. Here I am by Brighton Station, made it from Truly Hill down to Shoreham and then along to Brighton, up the hill to the station. So all I need to do is get a ticket, get on the train, and back up to Crawley. On the train out of Brighton, only just got settled down and we're pulling out already, so that's good timing, isn't it? So we've got the Brompton ensconced just down there goes in really nice and neatly. So yeah, about a 25 minute run up to three bridges and then about the same cycling home I should think. Maybe a bit more. So, soon be home. Yeah, so in the end, I decided not to get a coffee there. I thought I'd just get up to the station, get on the train and get home and have a free coffee when I get there, so just as well because it's a really good quick connection on the train back to Three Bridges and got on the train it was a fast train as well so I'm back here on the cycle track just got about just under five miles to cycle to home and then I'll have my coffee there but Three Bridges station now there's an interesting story for you uh, before I lived in this area and I knew what Three Bridges station was like uh, but after I'd heard the name of the station I had in my head this lovely vision of three beautiful arch bridges going across the lovely pond you know gleaming white railings on these bridges swans ducks lily pads sparkling water oh it's beautiful that was my imagination and this is the reality Hmm, <laughs> bit of a difference, eh? Although, to be fair, it is actually three bridges. When you're underneath, you can see three distinct sections, uh, I suppose, where the tracks go down and then the raised bits are, uh, you know, for the platforms or whatever, because I think Three Bridges Station straddles the bridge. So it is, although it looks like just one boring bridge, it is actually three when you look closely, but unless you're under it, you'd never know. But yeah, a bit of a funny one, isn't it? How reality and the mid imagination differ so enormously sometimes. Anyway, gonna get cycling now. Just gonna, uh, might have one quick stop for a bit of water halfway back. But yeah, I'm gonna get back home, put the bike away, chill out, cup of coffee. So I'll uh, leave you there.